at all these leaves. This windshield's filthy. Let's clean it off. Oh! Ugh. I've seen this before. One wiper arm moves, but the other one doesn't. This is a serious safety issue, and I wanna talk about it. My name's Lynn from 1A Auto. Let's get into it. Now we've got this in the studio. We're gonna start the diagnosis process, but we really kind of started it already when we were outside. I tried powering up the wiper blades and I could see that one of the wiper arms did move shortly and then it stopped. The other one didn't move at all. While I was continuing my diagnosis, I could tell that I could hear that wiper motor moving inside of the wiper cowl area. I could hear it. And I can even see a little bit of vibration. The arms weren't moving. That tells me that we have an issue underneath the wiper cowl, but we need to have a closer look. If you need any parts, check us out at wanayauto.com and we'll be sure to ship them out to you fast and free. Let's continue this diagnosis process. Let's start by moving these wiper arms into the proper placement here. If they were still attached on that wiper transmission, they really shouldn't move like this. That looks good. Let's pop the hood and start removing the cowl. With the hood up, I have a clear view of the wiper cowl, but before we can remove this, it's a good idea to remove as much of the debris as possible. We are going to have to remove each of the wiper arms as well. We'll use some compressed air for this. At this point, we're going to keep everything as vague as possible because every vehicle is a little bit different. To remove the wiper cowl so we can have a look at the transmission and motor located underneath it, we're going to have to remove the wiper arms from the area. To remove the wiper arms, typically you're going to find that you have one mounting nut holding them in place. We'll just remove that. You wanna be careful not to let that hit up against your windshield. Your windshield is glass and breakable. I'll do the same to this one. There we go. Give this thing a wiggle. Should be able to slide it out of here. And there's your wiper transmission. The next thing that we're going to do is retest the functionality while we can visually see this. An important note is never stick your hands or anything else inside this area while you're powering up the motor. Okay. Now, once again, we're not sticking anything inside this area. I can hear that the motor's functioning as it should. I can even feel it. This whole thing's moving, but nothing's actually pivoting the way that it should. If this was hooked up to the motor the way that it should be, the arms that are located inside there should be moving like this, and that'll be spinning each one of these areas that's attached to your wiper arms. Now directly underneath this area, there's a small adapter that has a ball on it. It's supposed to be attached to the rods that make their way across. It looks as though on this one, it's really not attached at all. So we've seen about everything that we can see at this point while it's still in the vehicle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this right out of here so we can have a closer look on the bench. We'll disconnect the wiring harness, remove these mounting bolts, and now we can get this over to the bench. Now we've got this over on the bench, but there's something that I want you to keep in mind. While this is in the vehicle, it's going to be covered by your wiper cowl. The wiper cowl itself does have ventilation coming across it, which essentially means that your wiper motor and the wiper transmission located under here is going to be exposed to the elements as well as the temperature. So if you've got extreme heat, there's going to be issues with extreme heat under this area as well. Now you've already seen the wiper transmission looking like this because that's exactly how it looked while it was still in the vehicle. Let's have a quick look down along the bottom here. Oh, yeah. So here's where the issue actually lies. Where I was talking about heat and also miscellaneous debris making its way in, your wiper motor adapter and the wiper transmission itself does have a whole bunch of pivoting joints. Those pivoting points on a wiper transmission are typically a ball and socket type of apparatus. The ball itself will be made out of metal, but the socket is typically made out of some sort of plastic. The plastic is the weak point. All right, I'm just gonna connect this in so we can have a close look along the backside here. Obviously, we're gonna keep everything away from this while it's functioning. Now at this point, I can see exactly what's going on here. We have that makeshift fix right along here that somebody used a bread tie. I can see that this is pivoting all around and it's really not functioning as it should. It could probably slide right off of there, honestly. Now, since this is actually attached right now, both of the wiper arms would be moving. But if you had any sort of pressure on there, more than likely this is just going to pop apart, which is what already happened to us. I'm gonna turn it off. So that's essentially the way that it should function if it was properly together, in exception of this one area here. Now, as I mentioned, if you only had one wiper arm moving, 
That's typically not going to be due to this arm that's attached to the adapter because it would be attached and it's going to lead all the way over to the far side. That means that this side where the wiper arm would be attached would still be functioning, but you'll also find that you do have another crossover bar that makes its way all the way across. Now, if that was detached from this area, it's not going to be able to pivot. Once again, you still have that plastic ball and socket area. Now you've seen what that looks like. You already know what it looks like if this was detached. This is the other area that was separated on this one in particular. So we'll just pop that right off, spark it up. Now, as you can see here, the motor's still functioning. This is coming across. This would be pivoting the proper wiper blade, but as it makes its way for that cross beam over to the other side, it's not attached anymore. If this was the case, you're only gonna have one wiper blade moving up and down the windshield, and you're probably going to hear a clunking noise coming from inside behind the wiper cowl. All right, we've got our brand new wiper regulator from oneiauto.com. We're gonna have to bring both of these over the bench so we can prepare the brand new one for installation. A couple of quick tips for you before we start taking anything apart. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you compare your original to your brand new wiper transmission. Once you're sure you've got the same part, the next thing we're going to do is pay attention to the orientation of the original. You wanna make sure everything's clocked properly. If you were to look at where each one of the arms leads to, you're going to find that the pivot points could be in the wrong position. This is common. So what you wanna do first is ensure that everything is in the proper placement. And then when you have your brand new one, make sure it's in the same positioning. The next thing that I would mention is before you start taking off the adapter along the backside of the wiper motor, it's important to make sure that you make a clear marking. Typically on the backside of that wiper motor and on the inside of the adapter, there's going to be a whole bunch of splines but there might not be a way for you to know exactly where it's supposed to be located on that area. If you're off by several teeth, you're going to mess up the clocking of your wiper transmission and your wiper blades might be sitting like this on the windshield instead of down where they're supposed to be. I'm gonna make my marking here for the adapter. The next thing we'll do is remove the wiper regulator from this adapter. This should just pop off. Ours is, well, on with the bread tie, so that's easy enough. Move along to the mounting nut. Take that right off of there. Sometimes there's a locking washer. Just get this off of here. A quick inspection, of course. There's that splined area that I spoke of. There's no keyway. Continue on to the mounting hardware. And there it is, friend. A quick inspection of everything here, and we can prepare for installation. Put this on here. I'm gonna start in all the mounting hardware before we tighten any of it, of course. We'll be torquing the manufacturer's specifications, of course. Now it's time for our adapter. I've already transferred over my markings. Just try to get this as closely aligned as possible. Ours had a locking washer, so I'll be putting that on, of course. back to where it's supposed to be. Now, before we put the rod on here, it's important to pay attention to the clocking. As I mentioned before, we wanna make sure everything's properly aligned. Double check to make sure there is lubricant in the ball and socket. It's kind of important, really. At this point, we're just gonna go ahead and press this right in here, listen for a click. I heard that, we'll give it a nice tug, make sure it's secure. Reassembly here is pretty much the opposite as disassembly. Wanna be careful around that windshield, of course. Slide it in, get it aligned. Let's connect in our electrical connector. Now at this point, I have another tech tip for you. Before we start putting anything else back together, we're going to test the clocking on everything. We want to make sure everything's functioning properly. We can do this with a couple wire ties. Got this wire tie here. Let's wrap it right around the end. At this point, we can have this facing in any orientation that we want, but we want to make sure we have the other one in the same positioning. Now I'm going to put the key in the on position, make sure nobody's around this area, and we're going to watch these wire ties. We want to make sure they're both going in the same direction and they both return to the same position. Now we'll just check their final positioning here. As you can tell, it looks perfect. 
sure this is completely secured in place. Now we'll continue on with our wiper blades and wiper arms. Now when we do this, we want to make sure we have it in the proper orientation up against the windshield. Let's put this right up on this area, press it down. Now while we have this on the windshield, this is where you really want to pay attention. If you have this aligned so it's sitting down like this, the wiper blade isn't going to go up far enough. If you have it set up too far, when you do power up the wiper motor, it's going to go too far and it could potentially cause damage to your A-pillar, which is part of your passenger compartment. Now, since I moved this all around, I took the arm back off. I made sure that the wiper motor is in the resting position. Now we'll have this aligned across the windshield as it needs to be. Continue on with our mounting nut. Start it on, snug it up, torque it to manufacturer specification. Let's get another one on there. Once again, we're making sure that it's properly aligned. Press it down. It's a good thing that was an easy fix. Look at my windshield again. Clean that off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 